This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome back. Lovely to see you. I haven't seen you since last year. I also haven't seen Jamie in forever. It's been about three weeks. <laughs> it really has. If I can recall correctly, we're making a little mini steam power hammer. What I definitely can't recall correctly is how on earth to do any of this stuff. Because in the time off over Christmas and New Year's, I think I've completely forgotten how to machine. My plan for today is to make as many of these tiny little parts as possible. We're going to start with this cylinder cover. This is speed running the machine shop. You know when your mother told you not to run with scissors? She never said don't run with machine tools. <laughs> Well, it's supposed to be running, but so far we're crawling. Crawling? We can't find the metal! We're meant to have a 45 millimeter diameter bit of round cast iron. And I don't know where it is, and I'm hoping that I didn't make something from it earlier. Oh dear. Oh dear, Jamie. Was that supposed to be made out of that? Oh, that looks unfortunately quite like the same size. Oh gosh, Jamie, no. Can you believe it? Gun metal. I made it out of the wrong bit of metal. This was meant to be made out of this bronze. But yeah, you'll see that the size lines up just perfectly. It's really quite close to that bit of bronze. Uh, and it would make sense for it to be made out of bronze because bronze can be quite slippery, which is useful if you're trying to guide a ram. Have we got any cast iron here? We can just cut some off. No, I don't have cast iron, but we've got plenty of steel on the racks. So, may the speed running begin with some steel. <laughs> Piston up next, and this little bit of cast iron. I don't know how this is meant to fit in there with an O-ring on. Got it made to size, but that's obviously not going to fit. There's an O-ring in the way that's too large. What do you do at this point? I don't know. Get in there. There's no way. There's absolutely no way that's gonna go. That O-ring is so proud of the hole. I'm going to need to ask your help and advice, guys. What do I do with this piece? I've made this to size, and the O-ring does not allow it to drop in. What do you do? Do you force it? Does the part need to be modified? If you actually know, please let me know down below. Jimmy, I think we've been making too many round parts lately. What I really could do with is something that is, I don't know. Ooh, I already made that joke, didn't I? This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I really, really hope that I can convince you to build yourself a website tonight. One of the things that I love the most is seeing small businesses succeed. There is no better story than the craftsman or woman perfecting their craft and then being able to make a good living off it. Passionate craftspeople often end up obsessing over the craft and not spending enough time focusing on making a living and having a good website and being able to market well is so important for that. Present your work the way it deserves to be presented with a Squarespace website. They've got countless themes that make a beautiful website that scales from mobile to PC that work with a phenomenal drag and drop system to mean that you can take all your beautiful photos and move them around the page exactly how you want, get the text just right, and then prepare to sell your products. You can sell unlimited physical or digital products. If you teach classes or you sell your time for consulting, you can use Squarespace scheduling. You can send email newsletters with Squarespace's email marketing campaigns. You'll purchase your domain through Squarespace too, and even use their URL shortener, just like I've got on my Instagram. Down in the description down below, squarespace.com forward slash forge is the link where you can get a free trial to see just how easy it is to build a beautiful website with Squarespace. When you make your first purchase, please use code forge at checkout to get 10% off. Go sell some stuff and make some money. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Now, it's onto our next speed run part. No! Why 
Why did that happen? The thread is completely ruined. Alec was supposed to be speed running, not speed hopping. I know, it's not, not very fast so far, are we? All right, I ended up having to make this part three times because my die... Wait, is that the same part? Well, it was meant to be the same part. Oh, I thought there were three different types of... No, 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 it broke every time. The die that I bought, the quarter 32 die, started stripping the threads. That's a weird way to say taking your clothes off. Stripping the threads. <laughs> so I ended up making this M6 instead of quarter 32. Slightly different thread. A little bit of concern that it could become unscrewed because it's coarser pitch. And I am going to have to make a note on the corresponding thread right here. It needs to be M6. And in true speedrun style, we have taken to using some teamwork. Jamie has been making the gaskets. I'm colouring your gasket, Jamie. A gasket is a little bit of material that goes between two air or water type parts or whatever in order that becomes extra hard for the fluid to leak. Goes between those bits, takes up any irregularities from the machining, and hopefully keeps a seal. All right, gotta make two of these things, maybe. Number through your hair because that's how fast we're going. It's time for part number 34, the valve rod. Oh yeah. God, this one's a piece of cake, isn't it, Jamie? Oh yeah. Booyah. What next, Japizzle? You what? Your nickname. Japizzle. Japizzle, short for Jamie Popple. Maybe this bad boy, number 24. Only a few bits left now. Oh, I know, but they're the fiddly ones, Jamie. You can't take the fiddly ones for granted. God, they really give you a big bit of metal for once, don't they? Jamie, did you see the amount of comments we got about me cutting this off in the latest video? People were very upset that I cut that off. So here's the thing. You've got to modify your tools to work for you, I believe, strongly in that. And this works great for me. A lot of people suggested take the handle off and rotate it this way. But that's all well and good if I want to be somebody that has to do this. Off we go, back we go, you stay. Oh, I need it. On you go. I don't like that. That takes way too much time. I want to have as easy a time as possible working and have as few things that get in the way of being productive as possible because I've got enough of those already rattling inside my brain. I thought you were going to say me. <laughs> <laughs> you too. And so I'm quite happy with this. It's been working well. When I want to power feed up, it just kind of sits there. When I need it, it's kind of an instant move to make happen. And folks, if you'd rather not cut off the handle on your Bridgeport mill, that's okay. I'm not forcing you to, but you should. Can you do the sound? <laughs> the actual sound. Sorry? The actual sound. <coughs> Good. So this diddy little handle is meant to be connected by the little fork ends that we made earlier. Unfortunately, something has happened with my mathematics. It doesn't fit. Now, how did I make this mistake? It's meant to be 125 thou. It is. That's an eighth of an inch. What is wrong with this? What? How did I screw that up? 120 thou. Shoot. Look at that pretty little thing. All right, now that is going to be attached up top to our valve piston. So what we've effectively just made is the linkage that allows us to control the valve from lower down on the machine. I presume you can now get an idea of how this is all working together. 
Now that arm that we just made, that 24, it's gonna be poking inside the body of this casting and affixed to a pin. But in order for the operator to control the steam hammer, stood back here, we need another handle that goes on it. Part number 20, which is a little more ergonomic. That's why they gave you so much material, because you make that out of it as well. Exactly right, it's made out of the exact same bit of flat stock. Part 20, coming right up. Alrighty, I have made all these little bits and bobs that all form part of the linkage system, and that is the result of an episode of speed running. And that means, folks, that our second to last bit of highlighting can be done. Well, technically our last bit of highlighting because we've already highlighted the last step, and that is the RAM. Please do hit subscribe if you want to see this thing be finished and find out if it runs in the next episode. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Squarespace.com forward slash forge. Check them out down below. I love it when you support our sponsors and you'll love having a great website.